Hi, welcome to Modeling and Simulation of Dynamical Systems at Czech Technical University in Prague. In this video, I would like to start an introduction or perhaps recapitulation for some of some basic formats of mathematical models of dynamical systems. And I will start with the most popular format, which is something called state equations. or this is also referred to as a state space model or state model. State model comes in the form of uh, just first order differential equation, something like this. X dot is equal to some function, generally nonlinear function of X and possibly also explicitly T. Furthermore, this equation called state equation is accompanied by the so-called initial conditions. That is the value of the state at some initial time. So let's now call this initial condition. An example x dot is equal to t times sine t where x at 0 is say 5. Now, uh, the reason why this is uh, called a state model is that provided f function satisfies something called something called Lipschitz continuity, then, uh, well, if you are not familiar with it, look it up on your own then specifying the value at the initial time is all that you need to specify t to to specif to determine x at any other any other time and not only that but what's perhaps equally important is that such solution will be unique I'm not saying that the solution is guaranteed to exist for all times. For some nonlinear systems, it can happen that after some time it uh, stops to exist, perhaps because some chemical reaction that led to an explosion uh, was accomplished. But at least over some finite uh, interval, it will exist and it will be unique. And this actually explains why we call the X uh, state. So, uh, x is a state. Once again, what makes it a state is that if you specify its value at some time, then uh, all future values are uniquely determined by, by this initial value. Now, very often, this state equation is, is, also is accompanied by something called output equation, which looks like, like this. It's simply that uh, the new variable, the output variable, is again some generally nonlinear function of the state and possibly also explicit function of of uh, of time in our branch in control systems very often the state equation come in slightly uh, extended form namely x dot 
is equal to f of x and some new variable u and possibly still explicitly uh, t. Now again provided uh, f function is nice then specifying uh, x at some initial time and u at times uh, at all future times you uniquely determine the state at all other future times <coughs> now uh, whatever I have just explained perfectly extends to the situation when there is not just a single state variable but instead you have a bunch of state variables say n of them in that case you can uh, you can uh, in fact use the same symbols it's only that now uh, x will stand for vector of scalar variables say n of them So we say that it's, uh, it's an element of, uh, of an n-dimensional Euclidean vector space where n is the order of the system. Now in uh, the introductory courses, but in fact even in some uh, more advanced courses, we very often encounter a convenient class of systems, the so-called linear systems linear state state space systems for which the state and output equations look like look like this x dot is equal to a uh, in general a, a can vary in time times x plus b again can vary in time times u and y of t is a function of c times x and d again can vary in time times u of course as usual x at t0 is given now uh, we can simplify this or we can, we can get a linear system in even simpler form namely as a so the so-called LTI system linear time invariant in which case now I will now just uh, rewrite it once again the matrix is A B uh, C and D are just uh, constant matrices. Now sometimes we use the this convenient and compact expression that uh, our system that we will label G is described by this quadruple of matrices A, B, C and D and we use this graphical symbol to, to show that G is not just a matrix but really a dynamical system described by this quadruple of matrices. N let's now have a look at a particular example of dynamical system or and its model and uh, let's see if it's actually a state model. So, example and the example is this we have just a single object let's say a ball upon which a force is exerted so this is our force could in general vary in time yeah and our object has a mass m And the object only moves in a single direction to the left or right and the coordinate system for us is x 
Now, of course, this is trivial. We know this from perhaps even an elementary school or, or perhaps high school that the evolution of the position of the ball is given by the second Newton's law, which says m times x uh, double dot is equal to f. So mass times acceleration is equal to the force that is exerted on our system. Now the question is, is, is x state, is a state variable? Now recall what uh, constitute what defines a state. So it's a variable which uh, if you know its value at one particular time instant, it fully determines uh, all future values of the same variable. So is it really the case here? So if I know x and let's say 0, do I uniquely determine x at some future time? x is a position, right? Obviously the answer is no. In order to uniquely determine <coughs> x as a function of t, I also need x dot, right, at the initial initial time. And it's only then that uh, these two, knowledge of these two, determines uh, the evolution of x. So apparently my x is certainly not a state. However, I can, I can turn this uh, second order model into a state space model by introducing an auxiliary uh, variable, or actually, uh, let me put it in this way, I will form a new state variable, in fact a vector, which will contain my original state variable and also the new variable, which is obviously the velocity, right? So with this new state vector, I can define a state model uh, like this. So x dot and uh, v dot, which together form x bar dot, is equal to now 0, 1, 0, 0 times x times v, which is... Uh, x and v, which is x bar uh, plus uh, 0, 1 over m times f. Now, uh, this is our state matrix A, this is our state matrix B, and this if you want to relabel it to, to be consistent with our standard notation, you can view this as u as the input. And that's, that's about it. That's a crash course on state space models. If you now want to uh, experiment a little bit with uh, state, state models in MATLAB, you can provided to you you have control system toolbox installed you can now use their ss command to define a state space model so the syntax is a b c and d and then use the commands such as uh, step Uh, initial uh, and and other to investigate responses of your state space model to a step commands to uh, to initial conditions and so on in the next video I will discuss some more formats of uh, models of dynamical systems